Why is DNA made up of four bases? Why not two? Why not three? Why not six? Hi everyone, I'm Elvie from Elvis Oxford Coach. I'm an Oxford Biochemistry graduate, private tutor and Oxford admissions coach, and a professional medical writer. In today's video, I'm going to be quickly going through one of the most interesting Oxford biochemistry interview questions that I've come across. Why does DNA have four bases? Sometimes students get this question with the accompanying question, why not two? Why not three? Why four instead of two or three? Really, what this question is asking you is to recall the principles of DNA structure and replication. Okay? On that basis, it should really be very obvious why DNA cannot have three bases. Simply put, there would be no complementary base pair system upon which uh, transcription and DNA replication, um, all kinds of nucleic acid hybridization is dependent upon. So that explains why not three. Why not two bases? Obviously with two bases we can still achieve a complementary system, be it AT, CG or any two other hypothetical um, nucleic acids. However, the limitation with this is that there is a severe limit to the amount of uh, genetic diversity genetic complexity that can be achieved. If we think about it, there's the codon system in which three consecutive nucleotides within a open reading frame of an mRNA code for an amino acid. And so if there are only two options at each base, two to the power of three, then the total number of combinations is eight. Um, this is in contrast to the theoretical total number of combinations possible with the four-letter DNA system, which it would be four to the power of three, which is 64. So depending on how the discussion goes, how well you answer, you may even get some further follow-up questions. The interviewer may posit to you, why not six then? Obviously, it's not going to be five because we've just correctly established that that wouldn't work because there would be no complementary system. But six would make sense based on what we know um, about DNA and um, the complementary strands and replication and all these things. So why not six? What could you answer in order to explain why DNA only uses four bases instead of six? So this question requires a little bit more of independent or original thought as going from four to six isn't so much as a restriction, but it's really more, right? And more is better in terms of complexity or genetic diversity, right? Because six to the power of three is 216 different combinations. So in theory, up to 216 amino acids. So why didn't DNA evolve to have um, six nucleotides, three complementary base pairs? Well, there are two things that I could suggest off the top of my head. Number one, if we look at the current genetic code, in which there are four nucleotides giving rise to a potential number of combinations of 64, i.e. 4 cubed, we don't have 64 amino acids. There are only 20. The genetic code is redundant. More than one codon codes for the same amino acid. So what can we say about that? We can say that perhaps with 20 amino acids, from an evolutionary point of view, it was sufficient to generate all the um, functional diversity in proteins and amino acids and R groups necessary to catalyze all types of chemical reactions. Or alternatively, there were only uh, 20 or so amino acids that were abundant in an er early evolutionary chemical setting and only those were stable enough chemically to be used and incorporated okay number two um, it could be the fact that in terms of the nucleic acids themselves only four were chemically stable enough 
to be used in terms of uh, DNA or RNA molecules as templates for replication. Because the overall context I'm trying to bring here is that you have to think from an evolutionary perspective, um, before biology, like cells and processes and machinery and information, there was just chemistry. And so chemical stability in the environment would have also been a very important factor. If you feel like you need extra last minute personalized preparation ahead of your biochemistry interview, please check out my website. I specialize in mock interviews, effective communication skills with your interviewer, and bridging the gap to university level biochemistry. You can find me at www.elvisoxfordcoach.com. Thank you, and good luck with your academic journeys in biochemistry. Did you find that interesting? What response would you have given had you been asked that question? Let me know in the comments. In my next video, I'm going to be talking through another challenging Oxford biochemistry interview question. And that is, how would you introduce a new amino acid into the existing genetic code?